Okay, welcome back. Again, it's Rick Baxter with Cost Control Software. Um, this section is going to be talking about our managing the production orders using Manufacturing Plus uh, app that's available for your Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. Um, software. So if you have the 365 Business Central and the Manufacturing Plus, I'm going to show you some of the functionality that you get when you combine those two together. So, and, and I'm going to focus on the production order. So let's just go to a couple samples and I'll just review some information with you here on these production orders. Now these could have been created, don't forget, these could have been created from your sales orders. I showed that in the last video from your sales orders or from a forecast or from the uh, item parameters there's lots of ways and of course you can always come in and say new and, and just create one from scratch so you can do it several different ways uh, I want you to see some of the information that's on actually let's go back um, before we even go there uh, this is my list and I've only got six in in my sample here but there's some really good information right here on screen first of all the item that you're producing, the part number, the routing that's being used to make it, the quantity that you're producing, the starting date, the ending date of this item, the due date, when does the customer want it, I think that's reasonably important right here, and that we're looking at all the released production orders, not simulated, this is be my list of released orders. Now notice too, I've got two very nice fact boxes here on the right side. We have an expected cost fact box. So the expected cost is like, what do we think the material is going to cost? What do we think the capacity is, the labor? Okay, if you had subcontractors on this one, that would show up here. Capacity overhead or manufacturing overhead would show up and then the total cost all the way down to the the uh, parts per hour information based on the quantity 27 that we're producing. Okay, and then actuals. So for those of you that like to really do the cost details on your jobs, I think it's important for you to see the actual cost that has been accumulated over the life of that production order, seeing the actual material cost, because it might be more or less than what you expected if you used more materials or less materials than what was expected, what the labor cost was, what the uh, then the total cost, or if you had subcontractors, all of that is going to show up right here on screen. Now, let's go to the actual card itself. So we simply going to click on the part number here or do the uh, process edit, but I just click the number. So here is what we call the production order card itself. So this is a release production order. You can see it right here, release production order. It, this is for, in my sample, it's for a bicycle. That's the part number that we're producing. This is the actual production order number up here. And it's for, in this case, 27 is the quantity that we're making for uh, this bicycle. It shows a couple things about the way I lay out the screens. Okay, and this is what you get when you purchase the, the Manufacturing Plus. You get this layout to the screen all through the software here. There's many parts that I probably didn't show you. It's all to do with the layout of the screen and how you uh, access and interact with the software. So uh, let's uh, take a look down at the line items. So for the bicycle, you'll see the production bomb number is shown. The routing number is shown. I like to show what routing is being used. I like to show the start time, the end time, the quantity. If I have produced any so far, in this case, I've produced 27. So the quantity that was needed, okay, the demand for this item, or this produ production order was 27, and I've actually finished 27, so my remaining quantity is zero. But do notice the concept there is partial production, because I know many of you would be uh, needing the ability to record partial production on this as well. And then we uh, display a lot of statistical information uh, both here uh, and on the lines, because you can have multiple lines. I 
want to make sure you know about that as well. This is just one bicycle, but if the bicycle was a make to order, you might have exploded lines here and you might have lots of sub assemblies that need to go into that bicycle. It just depends on the design to your bill of materials. I covered that in our manufacturing course, in the full course. Okay, and then um, the cost information is shown here. Of course, the cost information is shown on the fact boxes here on the right side. Very important to have that available all the time on screen. So that's why we've kind of laid out the screen this way. Also, I wanted very quick access to the routing and the components. So you'll see the routing and the components right here. So if I click on routing, this will bring up the list of the, the work centers uh, for this order. This is a, a four step. You, you may have just one step or you may have 20 steps uh, that, that you go all the different operations. Notice too, we've got actual output on each of these different operational steps. You may not get to that level of detail, but uh, some of our customers do. How much setup time do we have? How much run time do we have? And what the cost is per unit uh, so that we can actually extend and look at that capacity cost on this production order. So that's all to do with the routing. And let's see if there's something else I wanted to mention here. Yeah, can't I won't have time to show you everything about this uh, the software, but uh, I'd encourage you to get the uh, full documentation that lists all the the features because I won't be able to cover them all here. Um, and then components. I'm covering the main things like the components for this item. So here's the list of bill of materials. I think I've talked about some of these in the past and you'll notice that if it's a bill of material number I can drill down and I can see the sub-assembly uh, items that go into those those bill of materials. Okay and the cost information all of that is certainly uh, I can look at inventory availability, all sorts of things right here on screen. Okay, so let's go back. There is one other really important part to this that I feel very strongly about that I want you to see. And let's see if I can explain this right. Um, it's the best place to show you. I think I'm going to look up here under process. Yeah, right here. So um, this this is where we have what is called the capacity ledger entries and capacity ledger entries really a fancy term for just your labor <laughs> how much labor went into the the production bill of materials I'm sorry into this production order so this is where you can see the number the hours that is spent if we slide over a little bit you'll see uh, the direct the direct cost not too much on this one but here's what I want to call your attention to is this column right here called the resource number with manufacturing plus you have the ability to actually record who did the work on each of these operations so now in this in this sample here I've got on screen they didn't actually record the um, the user the resource number but you could see whether it was Ralph or Mary or Linda, whoever was working on each of these operations so that you have better individual labor tracking is what I would call it. And so the the um, these posted entries, because this is the posted side now, um, would have for you the actual resource that worked on those particular uh, those those particular items. Okay, I want to mention just one other thing real quick here, and then we'll wrap this section up. I want to go back to our tasks, and I want to go to, the, I want to show you on the journals. That's what I want to show you. So here on the journal, let's take a look at the consumption journal. So on the consumption journal, we can just open this one up is I want you to see again as you're entering the materials that you're consuming you've got the visibility to that supply and demand you've got access to the cost uh, information as you're entering the items I've only got two here in my sample as I'm entering these but I, you can see the actual cost the extended amounts are shown here 
uh, total quantity and total amount shown for the consumption of the materials against any of your uh, production orders. You can consume them here. You can also do it on an individual basis on, a, on a one production order at a time. So I uh, wanted you to see that. And we did the same thing on the uh, other journal, the output journal. So as you're recording output, you can also see how much setup time and run time you have posted for each of the people and their times. So that, uh, that information is readily available right on screen. So that's kind of a little screen change that gives you more, uh, more information as you're entering the actual postings. Now, as I mentioned, some of the things that I'm going in my head is like, is this, is this training or is this just an overview? This is just an overview. Okay. If you want the detailed training, I'm going to encourage you to contact, contact me or your, um, a support center, your consultants that might be able to help you with uh, the actual training on the NAV manufacturing. So I wanted you to just kind of get a sense for the uh, production orders and the changes we've made for that. Okay, the last section, uh, the last video I'm going to do is on the finished production orders. Should be a quick one just to give you a sense for the type of information that's stored historically. I know many of you want to be able to look at past production orders and see what happened on those orders. So we're going to do that in the next video.